this is Myra Elaine from the Buying Space Channel. I am reading from the Torah. As you can see, there's Hebrew on this side and the English on this side, and this is a direct translation from the Hebrew. So we are in chapter 29, verse 1. Then Jacob lifted up his feet and went to the land of the children of the east. And he looked, be and behold, there was a well in the field. And lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks. And the stone upon the mouth of the well was great. And thither all the flocks were wont to assemble. And they rolled the stone from the mouth of the well and watered the sheep. And they put the stone again upon the mouth of the well in its place. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence are ye? And they said, Of Charon are we. And he went upon unto them, knowing that Laban, the son of Nabor, and they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel, his daughter, cometh with the sheep. And he said, Lo, the day is yet long. It is not time that the cattle should be driven home. Water ye the sheep, and go and feed them. And they said, We cannot, until all flocks be gathered together. Then do they roll the stone from the mouth of the well, and we water the sheep. And while he was yet speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. And it came to pass, when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the mouth of the well and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his home. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him a month's time. Wow. You know, back then they didn't have letters or internet or anything. And so you had no idea if family was coming. And because you would have no other way to hear about your brother or your sister uh, when one of their children would come, you would get all the news. You know, I've been communicating uh, with my aunt recently because my mother's been in the hospital, but we just call each other on Facebook. I can't imagine if our family had been all through all these things and then, you know, we hadn't seen each other for months, all that we would have to say to each other um, or even years. I don't know how often, you know, it may have been a decade. Who knows how long um, the brother and sister here uh, would have been parted. Uh, sometimes um, people marry and go off and, you know, their whole lives are in a different location and they don't ever hear from each other uh, because, you know, like I said, they didn't have any way to communicate back then other than people going back and forth. <clears throat> I guess people that lived along a trade route um, could send word of, of family events. But it definitely is not like today 
where we, we all are on some, some kind of social media or can call each other all the time. Uh, I felt like for, like for a while that I lived in uh, Florida, which I live in Florida, but I also lived in West Virginia and I also live in California when my brother lived in California. So it was all the time that my state of mind was not just uh, my local community in Florida. It was uh, spread you know, back to my hometown and to where my brother lived. And I was like part of the communities where I had close family living because I would hear about, you know, extended family, especially uh, from West Virginia. Um, so it was like I was kind of living there. I mean, so when somebody had a flood in a nearby community or somebody had electricity go off, uh, you know, all those things that happened in that community, I would hear about it. So it was like I kind of sort of lived in my hometown, even though I was in Florida physically. So, um, but back then, all of those things that would have happened, they wouldn't have known for months or years or, like I said, even a decade. So this is a very happy reunion. And... You know, I feel it's kind of appropriate because Jacob and Rebecca, spoiler alert, end up getting married. So this is um, kind of a sweet passage to read on Mother's Day because it's kind of the first meeting that Jacob and Rebecca have that they could be a uh, couple. So, and they have many children. Have a wonderful and blessed day, everyone.